Hi, everybody. Welcome to the 2020 Milwaukee Film Festival presented by Associated Bank. My name is Kirsten Larson, and I'm the Programming Director for Milwaukee Film. And we're thrilled to be joined by the film team for Freeland. So we have the director, Mario Ferloni, and two cast members, Krita Fairchild and Frank Mosley. Thank you all for joining us. Thanks for having, Thanks for having me. me. Um, so my first question, pretty easy question, but Mario, I'd love to hear how you and Kate were inspired to make this film. Oh, it's it's an easy question, but kind of like it goes back a long way. We started working on this project in some ways about 10 years ago when we made a short up in Humboldt in the same, we stayed in the same town and we stayed to make Freeland 10 years later. and. And I guess we just kept finding excuses to go back there, you know, and um, and we started dreaming this uh, a fiction feature film set there about seven years ago and started working on scripts and connected with uh, our producer and then uh, found Krisha and uh, those conversations took us a few years to get everything sort of like in place and then and found Frank and, you know, and got everybody up there and had a had a blast. So I know that you come from more of a documentary background and mm -hmm. you had made a film called Pop Country back in the day. And how did uh, that film translate into this one? And like, what were the changes in between the two productions? Yeah, so that was the film that first took us there. And, and then we, at, at the time, it was still kind of like partially illegal, right, in California. Um, and we started working on this, on, on trying to get at the stories and the things that we had heard about and the, the threads and the people, uh, the things that we felt we couldn't do in a documentary way um, because of access issues. And, um, and, uh, and, and we, want, I know we knew that we wanted to like, keep the story fairly realistic and naturalistic, but it took us, I think, a while to get rid of some of the some sort of like out notions of what a fiction film needs to be um, and to land into this sort of like very spare, um, uh, very character-based film that, 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 we, that we landed on. Um, and I think a lot of it was, you know, once we, uh, it, it was sort of like this collaborative process uh, of working with, with Krisha and Frank and Lily um, and sort of like finding the characters together and sort of like building from uh, from this sort of like basic skeleton that we had set up, like building all the flesh together, which was a super fun process. Krisha and Frank, I'd love to hear how you both got involved with the film and what appealed to you about the roles that you ended up getting. Take it away, Krisha. I, I, uh... Uh, I made a couple of big decisions at a point in my life when you're in your 20s. Sometimes you can make the wrong decision in your 20s because you don't really see the path going ahead. When they brought me this opportunity to imagine that long path that that woman was on, I mean, you know, they got there when they were young. They were just young hippies and they built their own homes and they started their own businesses and they had taken such an arc. They made humble weed you know, the Emerald Triangle, they made that whole thing happen. And then to think about the, those people then going through this experience, I was just, hooked. I was, I was, I could relate in ways that um, I knew a lot of, of viewers would be able to relate. And I wanted to tell the story. And once you have an actor hooked with a story that they want to be a part of, that's, you're golden, you know, and, and that's what we all started like teaming up and working on it and uh, I brought my decades of life experience uh, uh, Frank brought his Lily brought her everybody brought things from their own life and um, yeah so that's how uh, why and how I wanted to do it I, yeah. to I uh I actually came on through both Laura Heberton who produced uh, and then also at the recommendation of, of Krisha. Uh, Krisha and I have been talking about working together for a really long time. And Laura had been a producer on another feature that I had had a, a smaller role in. And uh, so thanks to them, I was introduced to this like amazing world, like this script that I got from Kate and Mario. And I'm always looking for 
an opportunity as an actor to be in a world that you're not used to and to be outside your elements. You can surprise yourself and you can learn. Uh, I'm really big into to process, like finding finding if you have a, something about your character that's about a process, especially one that you have to learn, then you're not thinking about the acting. You're thinking about the process of whatever that person does, whether they're a farmer or a mechanic or whatever the thing is, you have to learn that thing. So that immediately, it was awesome. And I said, well, I want to be a part of this world. Um, Kreisha recommended this book to me to read by um, it was Emily Brady, I think, but it's called Humboldt. Uh, she goes, read this. And I read it on the plane. And it was basically about all these different perspectives about Humboldt uh, over decades. And it was very revealing to kind of just have that in my brain. Um, and then the chance to just get to work with like Lily as well. Creature, we'd always want to work together. And I was taken immediately struck by Mario and Kate's work. They sent me some of their short works, including Pot Country. And I was kind of mesmerized. And I was like, this will be great to explore on a larger scope. Um, and the fact that they were so inviting about wanting to make a film and build it from the ground up together in a very intimate, small way. I just had a really bad experience right before on like a, on a bigger film and it was this big crew and I feel like so many things were lost in the shuffle. So this immediately seemed like just getting to basics and getting just to work with people who are in it to make it because they wanted to make it. Um, and that's what it was. It was like summer camp. It was like a family and it was one of the best experiences I've ever had. I think that really comes through in the film, um, just seeing you all together. Um, and I would love to hear more from you, Mario, about since I did my research. So I saw that you had sort of allowed the actors to create their characters a bit and have more input into their backstory and everything. I am curious if allowing them that freedom and sort of having a bit more improv in the scenes that you're creating, um, if that changed the story at all from what you were originally envisioning, um, allowing people to sort of take control of what you would normally have complete control over. Yeah, I mean, I, I think like for us coming from Doc, like the, we were, we are used to like this much control on any, you know, and, and, but the other hand, what you gain is sort of like life is happening there. It's actually happening. All you have, you know, you have to like catch it. Right. And I think like, I think what we got to with this was like, okay, let's recreate some of that, man, because that, that's the element where we know how to, you know, that's our water, you know, like that's, <laughs> we know how to swim. So like, let's not try to control everything because we know how stifling that can be. I had a, you know, a couple of experience trying to do stuff that is more blocked, more controlled. And it just felt like, like, no, no, this is like, um, let's build these together and let's discover things together there, you know, um, as we're filming. And I think there was, a very uh, specific thread in the film, the connection between the the uh, Devi and Josh uh, and those those two guys that we we knew how we wanted to end it, but we didn't know how it was gonna go there quite. And it was a fascinating process because we we, we shot like some scenes and then so we were all set set together and we're like oh shit how do, what do we do now you know like this this changes things. <laughs> You know, and, and um, we had we we're lucky enough with amazing producer Laura uh, Hebert, and we were able to get a little more money together and do a reshoot in order to build some of the connections that to sort of like make some things make more sense, and especially in that relationship between uh, the the character that Krisha plays and the character that Frank plays, because of those things that we found. So, um, if anything, I think uh, like moving forward is like. I, Personally, I want more of that. I want to have more time to to work on those, you know, with with the actors ahead of time, um, and find those threads so that you know, because um, also there was a couple there were a couple of surprises that were like, oh, this, oh man, you know, <laughs> this is hard, you know. Um, so it, you know, I think like, um, uh, but yeah, but that connection, kind of I'd love to hear from you guys too. Like, I feel like. My experience is one is it was mostly just watching and being like, holy smoke, this is amazing. Like, how how did they do this? <laughs> <laughs> I think 
I mean, I know it was something that Krish and I were, you know, as we're having breakfast together and all of us were hanging out. It was just like, what, what, what's the other thing? Um, what's the real reason that there's this conflict that builds up between them? It's not just an external conflict of money, but like, what's the real thing? Like, what's like, what's the internal issue that makes the money thing just be something that comes out of the real problem, the real conflict, a uh, byproduct of it. And so that was when we just started spitballing. We were talking about how close like these two characters might be. And I, I was talking to Krisha about saying how, you know, I think Josh sees Debbie as a, as both kind of a surrogate mother figure in a way, but then also like he's attracted to her and by what she's built and the fact that she's got such an entrepreneurial spirit that he always feigns all the time that he wishes he really had that he's such a try hard, but, and I think he's got, he's ambitious, but I just, he doesn't know where to put it. Uh, and I think he puts it into the wrong places. So I was like, what if he, he misreads and puts some of that into a wrong place in some kind of weird, intimate moment of vulnerability that turns aggressive um, in a drunken state. And that's, I just, I was like, Krish, like, what do you think if there's like some kind of moment that happens between them. And I was saying it almost as in like a half-assed way of it. And I remember Krisha when I talked to her about it and she was like, well, what if like you just like really do it though? Like what if it's like, it's not like a half-assed idea, Frank, but what if it's like something actually happens between them? Uh, and I was like, maybe it seems like it's kind of a big moment to have. I was like, I don't know. And then we pitched it to Mario and Kate and that kind of opened up a world. Um, which was a lot of fun to explore. And I mean, thanks to Kate and Mario, they're so open to even hear it, first of all, let alone them being like, you know, they're, they're so, they're such amazing artists though that they're also like, yeah, they would tell us like, no, it doesn't work. Like, let's not do this. Or they're like, let's try it and let's see what happens. And uh, thankfully something kind of clicked. Um, Krisha, I'd love to hear if you, I know that this is a story about an older woman having to adapt to changes in her industry. And I think we all know that the film industry is changing all of the time. So I would love to hear if you drew from any of your own experiences um, working as a fairly prolific actress. And we don't have very many older actresses who get these kinds of starring roles. So I'd love to hear more about your experience and your inspiration for this role. For me, I I'm at a time in my life where I, I'm not interested in doing all the work on the planet. I'm interested in doing work that has a message that I believe in. And uh, when someone offers me something like that, that I'm interested in, otherwise I turn it down. And um, I'd rather be here with my dogs than making something that is just for money or just for commercial. I, I think that the changes in our industry right now, um, this film speaks very strongly to the world in which everything is changing for everyone. I, I, I think there are people who were in what they consider to be stable careers. When you choose to be an actor or a director or a cinematographer, <laughs> you're not seeing that as a stable choice. You're seeing it as a creative choice. But I think people right now who thought they were on career paths are being, with the pandemic, going, oh, okay. okay. So it's a much more universal experience. Um, Acting is acting. The job of living is what everybody's here to do. So Mario, I'd love to hear more about the location where you were shooting because it was so beautiful. And while it was very beautiful, I'm also wondering if you found it and if there were any challenges to filming out in nature. Well, we were lucky to partner. Um, our crew was six people. So like, and all came from Doc, and that was something that, and seven with Krisha, because Krisha was like a bear every day of the journey. And she did a lot of non-acting things. Like we all cooked together. We all like took care of our continuity together and clothing and makeup. So it was very much so a team effort. So it's a very small crew. And one of the people in the crew was someone who had grown up in uh, humble Claire Wise Bluth, um, who's a terrific filmmaker. And she did a little bit of everything in the production, including connecting us with a ton of people and sort of like having this sort of like bridge to the community. And once we got the buy-in from the community or a lot of people in the community, um, uh, we knew what we were looking for. We knew like we wanted to shoot in, in, in 
as lived in lo as location as, as possible, right? So we wanted to like the job for uh, the person who did the production design with us, for instance, was to get to a place and take away or change as little as possible, basically. And so that we could have this sort of like sense of like a, a lived in place. Um, and we were lucky to find that main location where she lives and we built her farm um, out of like two or three different locations. Um, and um, and then, you know, just finding the other places that we wanted to shoot them. Everything stayed within like a radius of probably a, a half hour drive, um, except for the commune, which was a real old abandoned commune. Um, uh, and where, uh, when we got there and they entered that commune, when they, when they entered that space, I don't think anybody has been there for a couple of years. So the place had this sort of like, you know, like this aura, uh, because it was the real deal. It's like, it, it was an abandoned place. There were books that were just like turning to dust, you know, and there were like old pans and pots in the kitchen that hadn't been used for years. So, um, uh, there's this sort of like and it's same thing with the with the, the the convention. We found a real convention, we got everybody passes, and we shot that scene almost like in a Borat film, you know, like three shows there as Devi, and we would just try out scenes with, with real people there and then go to them and explain what we we're doing, that we're you know, fiction film crew, etc. Um, but you know there's something that like I mean, at least for us at this stage in our careers, like it's like to try to recreate that. It's just like it's, it's all outside of the scope of what we could do. But when you get to the real place, it's just like it's just there. <laughs> you know, it's, it's so magical. Yeah, it is so beautiful, and like I said, it all just came together with a great cast and crew and location. And so we're so happy Thank you. to be able to share the film with audiences during a pandemic and we're so glad you were all able to join us for this conversation so thank you so much to you all thank you thank you for having us and be thanks sure. for watching mm -hmm. yeah and just last comment before we're done is that everybody should make sure to vote for the alan h bud and suzanne l selig audience award uh, which you can do on the movie page and yeah if you like the film you have to tell everybody <laughs> so and it can win our audience award so be sure to vote voting ends at the end of the day on may 19th so you have plenty of time might as well do it right away but thank you all very much and have a great day bye